Hello, my name is Dr. Shively Smith, and this is my colleague. I am Dr. Luis Menendez Antuña. We're so thankful that you've taken a moment to watch our video and get to know us and our program. We wanna take a few moments just to introduce ourselves, go over uh, the New Testament Studies program here at Boston University School of Theology and share with you uh, what, what we are excited about here at BU School of Theology. Um, hopefully as well to give you a few tips about applying for the doctoral program in New Testament Studies here. Thank you, Shively, for that introduction. Maybe it's time now that we introduce ourselves. What right. do we do? So I am uh, Dr. Luis Menendez Antonia. I teach New Testament at Boston School of Theology. And my specialty is mainly uh, Revelation. And I am particularly interested in contextual hermeneutics, particularly queer theory, post-colonial approaches to the to the Bible, and I'm also interested in the interaction between uh, biblical texts and art theory. Awesome. What about you, Shively? So my name is Dr. Shively Smith, as I said before, I'm assistant professor of New Testament here at Boston University School of Theology. And so my interests are also wide ranging. So I do uh, work in um, the Petrine tradition, but really within the general letters and Catholic letters as a whole, I do work um, paying in, um, special attention to social, rhetorical, interpretive approaches and in history. Uh, my interests are in um, interpretive history. So I'm really, I'm very much interested in the history of interpretation and reception history with particular attention to um, African-American and womanist um, biblical interpretive communities, but those aren't the only communities that I'm attending to, which means I do African-American and womanist biblical hermeneutics. Uh, and I also am known for the work that I do with Howard Thurman and 19th century African-American women. So that's me in a nutshell. Fascinating. So what is it that we love about working at the Boston School of Theology? So let me start. All One right. of the things that I love about working at, at a major research university is the opportunities yeah. that we have in terms of knowing uh, top-notch work do, being done across disciplines. I'm here talking about women's studies, uh, Latin American studies, yeah. humanities across the board. Yeah. Uh, one of the fascinating and one of the big assets of working here at the Boston University School of Theology is that we are in Boston. Yeah. One of the intellectual capitals of the world. Yeah. Always going, something going on, yeah. something exciting, something interdisciplinary, That's something right. mind challenging. Yeah. And there's always people coming here. I mean, so even if they're not right at Boston, you know, Boston University, there's, you know, scholars from all over the world and leaders from all over the world that are stopping, st sort of stopping in to Boston in some way. So you never know, you could be working on something from someone from Asia or uh, South Africa and, 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 a, and the scholar is here in town engaging in a lecture or participating participating in a conference. So just the access that you have because of the location of Boston is amazing. Mm -hmm. Right. Another thing that I love is the spirit of collegiality. Yeah. The yeah. fact that we are able to work in a humane environment, Yeah. that uh, we care for each other, uh, that we have a common project yeah. around New Testament studies and although we come from very different backgrounds right. and um, we have different trainings, we approach the field with a common purpose and with a common passion. And on top of that, we love working with each other and we do it in collaborative fashion. Yeah, I mean, I love that. I love the fact that we, we are, we are uh, collaborators and co-conspirators in the field in some ways. I mean, like, the, and that our projects uh, complement each other, and yet we we create room for our intellectual projects to do to be their own thing and to do their own work and interventions. And I, I see that as a space where students can come and also be challenged. So to to 
we're, 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 we are engaged in the intellectual exercise and in the intellectual enterprise in a way that affirms the humanity and dignity and brilliance of each person, even as we're pushing, um, even as we're pushing each other for um, um, a greater depth and rigor um, um, to, you know, do, do new things with old materials. And I mean, it's just, a, it's a very interesting, I love it because I think it's a generative way of engaging in the intellectual enterprise as a whole. You always come to the table. I feel like we always come to the conversation and to the table, not having to worry about um, making a case. For our, uh, for our humanity, making a case for our intellectual capacities and gifts, we were able to come to the table and, and know that that's already understood and assumed mm -hmm. and do the work together. Right. Yeah. Anything else that um, inspire you about working here? Yeah, I love being at um, Boston University School of Theology because of its legacy. I mm -hmm. think I think this is the school of Martin Luther King. Uh, this is the school of Howard Thurman. This is the school of sort of leaders all over the world. I mean, if you just sort of Google alumni, alumni of um, Boston University School of Theology, you get this rich, rich list of alumni that, um, that, that have come through here and um, uh, engaged in deep thinking and deep work and then carried that out into the world. Uh, to, that has um, a real big impact on me in terms of me understanding the importance of doing of what it means to be in this space, taking seriously um, the way in which the space itself, the spirit of the space sort of, sort of shapes the importance and urgency of this work. And, and, and I would say last, the Boston University School of Theology project works. Like it impacts the world in ways generations later that we're still living into. And I love that. I love that. Right. Also like very interesting projects coming up right now at Boston University. Yeah. Just, let's just mention, for example, the recently founded uh, Center for Common Ground. That's right. Um, the, the Center for Anti-Racism is coming up with Ibram Kendi and that's gonna be transforming the way we approach the humanities in general at yeah. Boston University. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, just, I think there's, this is a rich opportunity to get involved in any number of um, um, learning communities in this space that are not just new, in, in the New Testament studies, but across the university and across the city. It's just a rich and a rich and exciting time to be here. Right. So now maybe we can talk a bit about actually the doctoral program. All right. right? Um, what is in, in your mind? What makes a successful PhD student in New Testament? You, you probably already know what my first word is going to be. I. Passion. Passion. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we bring passion to this work and this project. And I am excited about prospective doctoral students who uh, or, you know, you're going to bring the things that you need, you're expected to bring in, in terms of education and training and background and that sort of piece. But uh, passion what are you passionate about in this discourse and in this work i couldn't agree more i i like to talk about about it in terms of vocation yeah, i love that that's fire that one has that that cannot be um put down um i have to say also that passion overrules intelligence if you are watching this video you are ready to go, go into a phd it's not about intelligence. Right. It's about passion and drive and purpose. Yeah. So I couldn't agree with you more that what makes the first quality to be successful at a PhD program is passion. You call it passion. I call it vocation. But we're talking about the same thing. Yeah. I think, and I think, I, I don't want to belittle the importance of the drive and the necessity for follow through. I mean, the doctoral programs, no matter where you go, especially in biblical studies, where we're, 
We're also dealing with languages and textual matters. Uh, you're moving. I always like to talk about it as we, we uh, among our colleagues, are the ones who are constantly in this time machine, depending on how we play in biblical studies. In our particular, in our particular area here, we're absolutely playing where we're in the time machine, moving between the ancient world and other interpretive um, communities. So you're constantly moving back and forth. And so one of the things that that requires, I think, is um, a, a certain degree of imagination, um, a certain degree of intellectual, intellectual curiosity and courage. And it also requires a certain, a certain degree of drive and follow through. Because I think one of the things that you and I both are um, committed to is, um, you know, I like to talk about in terms of Clifford Gears, this thick description, right? That, um, that you're going to do both uh, uh, with rigor and depth, right? And clarity. And so that requires a certain degree of uh, follow through that requires a certain degree of um, drive, resilience, um, that I think is very important for succeeding, not just here, but in any doctoral program. Right. I completely agree. Uh, you mentioned resilience, and that I think leads us to another thing that another quality that I think is very important to have, which is uh, the ability to work well with others. That's right. It brings the spirit of collegiality and humility. Mm -hmm. That is uh, the ability, the deep ability to learn from others. That's right. And to be willing to be undone by others. That's right. In a careful way, in a kind way, but the ability to constantly be learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that the way in which we like to do this is very important. And you've heard me talk about this before. I am not interested or invested in a sort of war model in the intellectual engagement. So we're not, when you even talk about be un, being undone, we're not trying to sort of one up each other in these intellectual conversations. What we mean by undone is this sort of chair, like you said, charitable listening um, that engages, that uh, wants to go deeper, that recognizes we all bring blind spots and uh, pieces that we miss, things that we haven't yet explored or know. We haven't yet read that. We haven't yet translated that. Um, we haven't thought about this particular community or this particular point in time and someone else has and that they introduce that to us as a way for us to think to deepen our thoughts, to think, to expand our understanding, to explore other possibilities. Um, and so, you know, we're really interested in intellectual conversations and community that is that shows up for each other to do our best work mm -hmm. um, without without the pressure of trying to um, you know sort of defeat each other the idea is when one of our projects succeeds succeed all of us are succeeding because all of us have functioned as some form of community of interpreters and getting there together i mean that's the environment i think we're really interested in cultivating with um our doc with doctoral students right like when i said and done what i meant i was actually referring to some um personal circumstances mm -hmm. in which in that context that you are talking about, I was blown away by what somebody was doing with the Bible, with the New Testament. And I had to put aside mm -hmm. everything that I, I was doing and per perceiving a new path. That's what I'm talking about in terms of listening to each other and being undone by each other, right? In the spirit of learning together. Yeah, I love that. I think we do a good job of learning together. I know I've grown I can't, I can't think of any projects in the past year and a half that um, there aren't parts and there aren't, there are not part sections of it where I say that's, 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 that's Louise talking to me there, or I'm thinking about the, this, or uh, I, I love, I love, I love the ways in which um, that is manifesting itself in really concrete ways um, in our scholarship and, and um, that I think is, that I hope will continue on working with doctoral students as well. Right, and that's definitely one of our biggest assets, right? Mm -hmm. That we that um, we are we want to bring the spirit of collaboration and collegiality further on mm -hmm. um, with the students that uh, decide to come to Boston University to study here. Mm -hmm. 
So let's just, we'll get to the big question. What are some of the, what are some tips that we can give prospective doctoral students who are, they've, they, they've listened this far to the video, so they're still interested. <laughs> so what are some tips we can give you about uh, the process for of application for the doctoral, doctoral program here? So, uh, well, one part of the, um, one very important part of the, um, application process is your statement of purpose. And I'm sure you have some words to, to say about that, Shifley. Yeah. Um, but, but I think that besides the statement of purpose, which is one part of the application, I think we are looking to work with students who have a global mentality. Yeah. That yes, you're interested in first and second century texts. Yes, you are gonna learn Greek and Hebrew and the languages. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have to engage with textual criticism, mm -hmm. but you are invested yeah. in the ethical, political, and theological consequences of your interpretations. That's right, yeah. I'll in a world that is connected and that is in, in, that in deep dialogue with these um, authoritative texts. I agree. I love that. I mean, I, so how do you communicate? I guess the question becomes, how do you communicate that to us? One of the ways you're going to have your transcripts, you're going to have your recommenders. One of the ways that um, it's a real opportunity is that statement of purpose. I think the statement of purpose, um, one of the ways to think about um, the statement of purpose is that it's sort of, it is, it's a narrative, right? It's narrating your intellectual journey that has led you up to the point of submitting this application in the first place. So what are the questions? What are the particular uh, subject matters and areas in the study of New Testament, New Testament studies and history that you're, that you, that you found yourself ex becoming alive to is how Howard Thurma would say. And then you, you continue to pursue it. You have continued to deepen it and explore it in different ways. And now you find yourself saying, there is, there is a lot more that I want to do. And these are some of the working questions that I have. These are some of the ways, these are some of the, the, the tools and experience experiences that I bring with me. And these are the ways in which I think, you know, coming to the Boston University School of Theology, working with you two um, will help me to continue to do that and how and the alignment and fit. Uh, but it really is a sort of narrating your intellectual journey, giving us stopping points along the way to kind of see what were you doing? What were the questions you were asking? What did that lead you to? And how do these things connect that now you are ready to um, engage in doctoral studies at this level? Yeah, I completely agree. And I would like to actually like to mention also that those questions sometimes are gonna change along the, the process. That's right. And that's okay. But I think that it's particularly important what we started mentioning at the beginning, that your passion and your commitment comes through yeah. in a way that is articulated and uh, related to the questions that you want to pursue. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I think, I think that the last thing that I would... Um, want to say is this is not the time to sort of be bashful or to hold back <laughs> like this is really the time to talk about um the ways in which you know you have really leaned in to um these conversations leaned into the subject matter and for us in very different kinds of ways i mean i think it's important to say that we recognize that everyone who gets a PhD isn't necessarily going to go and become a professor at a university or a college. And we understand that, but there's so many other possibilities for that. So how has your work also explored mm -hmm. uh, and, and represents sort of thinking of the other publics and discourses that this, that, that this, that, that this area of study uh, interfaces with, uh, can um, engage, uh, it, that's important too, I think. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I want. I would like to start wrapping up the video by also mentioning that to us it's really important to not only uh, be part of the school of theology, but be part of a wider set of networks. Yeah. 
because we are particularly um, because we have lived it ourselves. Absolutely. <laughs> it takes a village a to village. raise a child, right? So we wanna we're particularly, or uh, I think I, I talk for the both of us when I say that we are particularly excited to bring networks like the Hispanic Theological Initiative, FTE. Fulbright, we, we both have uh, extensive experience um, in these networks and we are very aware that it takes a whole set of people yeah. to help you succeed and to thrive in your own project. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, we, we are interested in approaching um, New Testament studies, recognizing that these texts come from communities. They went, they were intended for communities. They have continued to be received uh, and engaged by communities in the larger world and even in the academy. And so we are interested in text and context, communities and, and, and communities of interpretation. And we're interested in, in that as broadly as possible, with, but with much depth and rigor, intentionality, conversation and expansion. So we hope that you continue to uh, engage in your discernment process for the doctoral program and continue to consider us a possible space mm -hmm. for you to do your studies. We look forward to meeting you. Uh, we can't wait to see how this turns out. Um, I also maybe finish saying that uh, our profiles are available on the webpage and there you can find our uh, email addresses feel free to reach out with questions, concerns, passions. Uh, we are here to help you and to serve you. Blessings, everyone. Blessings, everyone.